I used to work for Nintendo of America while the Wii was being created. It was actually kind of a good job, but there was one guy who worked there that nobody really knew. We didn't know what he was like or what he did on his spare time. All he had were just rumors. His name was Henry, and there were rumors about him being spread around the office about what he did, where he lived, and how he even got hired in the first place. All of which are most likely not true. To me, he was just some other guy who just wasn't really known by anyone. But sometime during the Wii's production, he started to act... strange. He would show up to work late, he glared at some of the employees, and he would hide in the bathroom and wouldn't talk to anybody. I almost felt bad for him. But one Tuesday afternoon, my coworker Mike walked up to me on my break. Hey Jonathan, what do you think Henry's doing over there? I've known Mike ever since I started working at Nintendo. I would consider him to be one of my best friends. We would go bowling, grab a bite to eat, and sometimes even play a round of golf. Anyway, I looked over at Henry and he was just pacing, and I could clearly see him mumbling to himself. Looks like he's talking to himself, I replied. Seems like he's insane, Mike said jokingly as he sipped his cold can of coke. Henry continued to pace around talking to himself for about a minute, until he left the office. Me and Mike followed a safe distance away. We saw him grab a Wii, already boxed and ready to ship to retailers, and went into one of the back offices. He was sure to look around to make sure nobody was watching, and proceeded to enter the room, shutting the door behind him. So, uh, you wanna check out what he's doing? Mike asked. Maybe later. Besides, our break is almost over. I replied as Mike and I walked away. It has been a good 10 minutes since our break period ended, and I was working. I had a clear view of the office that Henry had entered, and he still hasn't come out. I started to become curious as to what he was up to in there, but I eventually decided to turn back to my computer and continue working. About 30 seconds pass and a loud scream catches the attention of everybody in the office. I whipped my head to face the door to the room that Henry was in, and all I saw was one of my coworkers standing there, shaking. Everyone got up, left their cubicles, and ran to the room. And when I managed to get a good look into the room, I almost fainted. Henry was laying on the floor, dead. His body was dark, unrecognizable, as if he were electrocuted. The result was an office-wide panic. People were screaming, calling the police. Some even vomited right there on the scene. But two days later, everybody who was present when we saw Henry's body were called down to the presentation room. I was still shaken from the whole thing and didn't really want to think about it anymore, but I just went anyway. When we got there, my boss was standing at the front of the presentation room while we got all settled. Hello everyone, my boss said. I'm sure that you are all aware of what happened two days ago, and I'm just as shaken as all of you. However, we have gotten security camera footage, and I thought that it would be important for you all to see it. Please note that some of this footage is disturbing. My boss walked over to the projector and brought up the footage and pressed play. The video began with Henry entering the room with the Wii and sat down at the desk. 
he hooked the Wii up and set it up. It was normal for the most part, other than the fact that he had a bottle of beer and was drinking it throughout the process of setting up the Wii. When Henry got the Wii fully set up, the first thing he did was go to the Me channel, and when it opened, he pressed the button to make a new Me. The Me's gender was male, and he started it from scratch. He made the Me bald, with huge eyes and a huge mouth and a small nose. Okay, that right there is the weirdest me I've ever seen in my entire life, one employee shouted. We all shushed him and continued watching. And then Henry got to naming the me. And then he named it, Etelad. Wait. Pause the video, another employee shouted. My boss paused the video as the employee took a couple seconds to analyze this me's name. That's delete spelled backwards. He yelled, and before we knew it, everybody in the room was in a heated debate on whether Henry knew what he was naming this me, or if it was just a coincidence because he was drunk. It wasn't long before my boss put a stop to it. Everybody shut the hell up, my boss yelled. He pressed the play button again, and we continued to watch in silence. Henry saved the me, and put it into the me plaza. Henry simply stared at the screen for a bit and said, Huh, well, I always wanted to be a me, he said as he chuckled. Immediately after he said that, my boss paused the video. We are now about to enter the part of the footage that is disturbing. If you feel you are unable to handle the disturbing nature of the following, Please leave the room now, my boss explained. And thus, many employees left the presentation room. I counted, and there were only six people left. Me, Mike, and four other co-workers. So, uh... You staying? I asked Mike. Yeah. I want to see what happened. He replied as my boss pressed play again. In the footage, Henry noticed that the monitor screen started to flicker. He looked down at the plug for the Wii, and it was about halfway into the socket. He bent down to push it back in all the way, and when he did, he got electrocuted and dropped dead. I looked behind me and all of the four co-workers in the room winced as Henry got electrocuted in the footage. I didn't even want to look at it. Mike just sat there and watched with a blank expression as if all emotion had been sucked out of him. I looked back at the footage and got a good look at Henry. His body would sometimes jerk and flinch due to the electricity. But about six seconds later, the monitor in which Henry made that me on strangely went static. What the hell? I thought to myself. In fact, that was the only thing I could think of at that point of time. But then, the monitor displayed Edeled, the me that Henry made, and he started speaking. I've always wanted to be a me, Edeled said in a distorted, low-pitched voice. Have you ever wanted to be a me? Nothing happened for about 30 seconds until a loud scream sound effect was heard, and then the monitor was flashing with creepy images. I couldn't get a good look at what they were because they were flashing so fast. But there was one image, the final image, which stayed on the monitor for about three seconds. It was of a hallway with hospital beds lined up next to one another. There was nobody laying on the beds though, and then after that last image, the monitor cut to static, and then the footage cut to static. Everybody was silent. Nobody said a word. I... I'm, I'm very sorry you all had to see that, my boss stuttered as he turned off the projector. You may all leave now, he continued as we got up from our seats and left. But as I was leaving, I realized something. After we went back to work after seeing Henry's body two days ago, 
I looked back and noticed one of my co-workers, Johnny, taking the Wii, with the Wii remotes, and the cable and box out of the room. I assumed that he was just going to format the Wii system memory, but then rumors started going around the office that Johnny just put everything back in the box, sealed it up, and put it with the others without formatting the Wii system memory. The Wii has already been sent out to retailers. I should have known that's what Johnny did. Johnny had a reputation around the office for doing some stupid things. But this would leave whoever was unlucky enough to buy the Wii to find out about Edeled. Now I have no idea what Edeled could do, but I knew that it wouldn't be good. And there was no way I could track the Wii. But I still couldn't accept the fact that whoever bought it would soon find out that it was used by a man who died while using it. Or at least find Edeled in the Me channel. So about two weeks later, I resigned. While me and Mike still remained friends, there will always be that day that in the middle of a conversation, one of us will bring up Henry, and we would sit there in silence. And I really, really hope that whoever buys that weed doesn't experience anything that Edeled might do. And if they do, then I pray that it doesn't make a lasting effect on them. Henry was a man that nobody really ever knew. Nobody spoke a word to him and never really acknowledged his existence. Was he a loner or did he have a mental disorder? Nobody knew. But all we could do was speculate. Remember, all we had were rumors. Two thousand six, the year that the seventh generation of game consoles released. Some may think that two thousand six was the best year of gaming, but to me, it only exists as a painful memory, one that will just not go away. I got a Nintendo Wii for my seventh birthday on November twenty eighth, two thousand six, about nine days after the Wii launched. I still remember the moment when my dad gave me the present, and then I quickly ripped it open. Wow! A Wii! Thanks, Dad! I said in happiness. After that, my dad had a bit of work to do, and I begged him to help me set it up. And when he was finally done, he helped me set up the Wii in the living room. What surprised me about the Wii is the controller, as it reminded me more of a TV remote. After my dad set it up, he left me to play, and I was going to play Wii Sports, which was the Wii's packing game, but something else caught my eye. The Me Channel. So I decided to open that up instead. But when I got to the Me Channel, there was a single Me there. I clicked on him and found out that the Me's name was... Edeled. The name Edeled didn't make any sense to me until I looked closely into the letters and found that it was backwards for delete. I took a good look at Edeled. He was bald, with a big smiling mouth, giant eyes, and a small nose. He started to creep me out a bit, so I decided to delete him. I then decided to make a me version out of me. So I clicked the button to make a new me, and I named my new me, Kyle, because that was my name, Kyle. But then when I got back to the plaza area, Edeled was back, with the same creepy look. So I deleted him the first chance I got. I was still kind of creeped out, but I just decided to forget about it and just play some Wii Sports. I liked Wii Sports. It was a compilation of five sports, and these five sports were tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. I decided to play bowling since it was my favorite sport. My me was in a bowling alley with many other me's, and occasionally I'd see the me in the lane next to mine do their throw. 
but about halfway through the game, I saw a me, a, a bald me to be more specific, walk up to the lane next to mine. He threw the ball and got a strike. The me then turned around to celebrate, but then I saw the me's face. It looked exactly like Edelette's face. I thought I deleted him. Uh, I guess I'll just have to delete him again. So I quit Wii Sports and went back to the Me channel. But before I could delete Edeled, something weird happened. Edeled actually started speaking. His voice was incredibly low pitched and distorted. Why are you trying to delete me? After Edeled said this, I spoke out. What? Well, what do you mean? I asked in fright. What was I thinking when I said that? Of course, Edelid wouldn't hear me, but to my surprise, he did. Are you kidding me? You know what I mean. Edelid said with annoyance. I, I just don't want you in my me channel. You're, you're, you're creepy, and and you're and you're just creeping me out. I'm sorry. Mies have feelings too, you know. How'd you feel if I deleted you? Edeled yelled. The screen then cut to static for about five seconds until it cut back to the Me channel with a close up of Edeled's face. Edeled's pupils were huge and he had a very angry expression. And as every second passed, Edeled's expression became angrier and angrier. I pressed the home button and ran to my dad. He was on the phone, so I waited for him to finish. D dad th there's something wrong with my Wii, I said in a scared voice. I led my dad to the living room and turned off the home menu, and surprisingly it looked normal. W what He was right there, Dad! He, he was right there! I yelled with confidence. Kyle, maybe you're just playing a bit too much. I think you should go take a break. My dad recommended. So I did. I opened up the home menu again and took a 15 minute break. But as I left the living room, I could have sworn that I heard my dad say to himself, Oh God. But after 15 minutes, I came back to the Wii and turned off the home menu. And an animation played of my me being deleted, and then a dialogue box appeared saying, Goodbye Kyle, and then the me channel automatically turned off and went back to the Wii menu. I tried to get back into the me channel, but every time I did, a dialogue box would appear saying, We deleted you, and it would take me back to the Wii menu. I soon realized that Edelette had somehow deleted me in a way so that I couldn't make any more Miis, so that meant, no matter what game I played, I always had to play as Edeled. December 5th, 2006. I was sitting in my bedroom. I was bored, and yet still in shock after what happened a week ago with Edeled. Christmas was coming, and I was tired of playing as Edeled in all the games I played. I actually managed to find out about the guest players, but whenever I tried to play as them, they would just reload as Edeled. I tried asking my dad for a new Wii so I can start over, but he doesn't acknowledge Edeled's existence, and doesn't believe me about the whole fiasco. But anyway, I heard the doorbell ring. I ran to the window and saw my best friend Nathan waiting outside the door. I ran to the door and let him in. Hey Kyle, he said happily. Hey, I replied. We talked for a bit as we went upstairs, and just as I thought, he found the Wii. Whoa, dude, you have a Wii? Nathan said with excitement. Why didn't you tell me? He continued. Well, uh, Nathan, you see... Before I could finish, Nathan grabbed a Wii Remote and said, It's fine, dude. Let's play, as he gave me a Wii Remote. 
I reluctantly turned the Wii on, and I took a glance at Nathan's face, and he was clearly very excited. The Wii menu came on screen, and I became nervous when Nathan pointed the Wii remote to the Me channel. Hey Kyle, uh, is that the Me channel? I heard it's really cool, Nathan asked. Y yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's really cool, I stuttered. Nathan clicked on the Me channel and I tried my best to think up of an excuse to not go on the Me channel. But before I could come up with one, Nathan pressed start. And what was weird was that I expected the dialogue box saying we deleted you to appear, but to my surprise, it actually led us into the Me channel. But when we got into the Me channel, it was very, very glitchy. Textures were in the wrong places, and the music was very, very low quality. I looked at Nathan, and needless to say, his excitement was replaced by pure confusion. He looked back at me. Uh, Kyle? Uh, do you know what's happening here? He asked. Before I could start explaining, I heard a very loud grinding noise. We turned back to the TV and saw Edelet standing in the middle of the Me channel. My eyes widened in fear. Edelet just stood there for a while though, just staring at us. Edelet looked at me again. Uh, Kyle, what's going on here? He said as I looked back at him. I have to close the Me channel, I replied. I pointed the Wii Remote at the exit button at the top left of the screen, which its textures were all mixed up. Come on, come on, come on, I repeated to myself as I repeatedly clicked on the exit button. But the dialogue box to choose if you wanted to leave wasn't coming up. And at this point, I was starting to panic. So did Nathan. While I was desperately trying to close the Me channel, Edelet started speaking. Hello, Carl. Kyle, what's going on? Nathan asked me frightfully. Just calm down, sit down, and I'll, and I'll explain it to you later. Just let me handle it, okay? Nathan sat down on the couch, and just when he did, Edelet spoke out again. Didn't you know that your is coming to visit? What are you talking about? I asked. The new created. He should be here at any moment. Immediately after Edelet said that, my me came. He fell from the top of the screen and landed on the ground of the me channel, and Edelet disappeared. I was happy to see my me again, but when he got up, I was shocked. He looked extremely pale, and he was covered in blood and stains and he was wobbling, as if he was struggling to keep his balance. And I could have sworn that I heard my me whisper, Help me. I backed away from the screen, and Nathan was literally shivering. I made another attempt to close the me channel, and Edelet appeared. Leaving so soon, Carl? You haven't even got to see me up close yet. Edelet said in a sinister tone. The camera then zoomed in onto my me, and when it was fully zoomed in, I saw my me crying as he was struggling to stand. I felt bad for him. But after a couple seconds, Edelet walked on screen with an axe. He walked over to my me and pushed him over. My me fell on the ground and cried even more. Edelet put his foot on my me to restrain him. You get away from him! I yelled. Edelet looked at me and said, Well, I'll get away from him. What's he's dealt with? Edelet said as he looked back at my me, who was crying and out of breath from squirming. Edelet raised his axe and swung it at my me's legs, chopping them off. And while there was no blood, I did see red stains in the areas in which Edelet chopped off my me's legs. But I could still tell that my me was still in intense pain, and he was squirming for dear life. Edeled then raised his axe again, and paused for a moment. I looked back at Nathan, 
and I will never forget the fear I saw on his face. Every inch of fear was visible on Nathan's face. I never saw him so horrified. I eventually told him to go to my room so that he wouldn't have to see anything that would happen next. He nodded his head and ran to my bedroom and shut the door. I turned back to the TV and Edelet swung the axe at my Mii's neck, decapitating him. And there was still no blood. However, I still did see red stains on my Mii's neck and head. I was done at this point. I ran to the Wii and repeatedly pressed the power button, but it didn't work. I tried again and again and again, until I saw the screen go to static. But as time went by, I saw my Mii's decapitated head slowly fade into the screen. Immediately, I went back to trying to shut off the Wii. But I still couldn't shut off the Wii by using the power button. So, I unplugged the Wii. I took the Wii, Wii remotes, and cords and ran to my room. I swung the door open and threw the Wii into the closet. I looked at Nathan, who was sitting on my bed and still in shock after everything that has happened today. Is... is it over? Nathan asked quietly. <sighs> yeah, it's over, I replied while breathing heavily. I think you should go home, Nathan, I continued. Alright, see you later, Nathan replied as he left the room. After Nathan left, I went back to the living room to see the static is still on the TV. But after a couple seconds, the static was replaced with a black background with white text saying, This is not over. And then the TV turned off. The year is 2013. I've just turned 14, and I'm enjoying playing the Wii U that I got for my birthday. But whenever I hear the word Wii, I think of that me, that me that traumatized my childhood all those years ago. I got a Wii in 2010 with some allowance money, and luckily that me didn't appear on it. I had fun with that Wii, but whenever I picked up the Wii remote, I felt scared. Scared that the me would appear once again. You know which one I'm talking about. Edeled. One day, while in bed watching Netflix on my Wii U, I remembered that message on the TV screen back in December of 2006. I remember that day vividly. The message was, this is not over. But it's been seven years and nothing's happened. As the movie I was watching ended, I asked myself a question that I was surprised I didn't ask myself sooner. Is Edeled sentient? <laughs> no, he can't be. It's just some stupid AI. But what sick being would program an AI to do what Edelet has done? I turned my head to face my closet, with the old Wii still in there. I never touched it again after what happened all those years ago, so I just sort of left it there. I wanted to know if Edelet was some virus that somehow got into the Wii. I do have a bit of technical knowledge, and I thought I could put the Wii's SD card into my laptop to access the system files. I slowly walked to the closet and carefully picked up the Wii. I took out the SD card and brought out my laptop. I plugged in my USB SD card reader and then put my SD card into it. Here it goes, I whispered as I took a deep breath. After I inserted it, I opened the file explorer and clicked on the SD card and gained access to the Wii system files. There were files like game data, system memory, and lots more. I clicked on system memory, and one result came up, and it read, edeledmechannel.wad. I really didn't think that I'd be able to find something related to Edeled so quickly. 
I was kind of hesitant to click on it at first. However, I just remembered that I had a part-time job working for my local grocery store. So if anything happened, I can just save up and buy a new one. I clicked on the file and the screen went black. It was black for about 10 seconds and then I was greeted to a simulated Wii menu. It was really messed up though. It was dark and all the music was low quality. And I'd occasionally hear loud screeching noises and the icons on the Wii menu would occasionally cut the static for about a split second. The hand icon though, which I controlled using my mouse, was just Edeled's face. I just stared at the screen for a while. I wanted to leave, but I also wanted to find out the mystery of this me that traumatized me as a child. So I continued. I clicked on the me channel and pressed start, and I was taken to the me channel. It was just a black screen with all the icons on the side, but nothing else. Edeled then appeared on screen. Yeah, I, um, I did, I said. I always thought that you'd eventually come back. Edeled replied. Delete me. What? Why? I questioned. I, uh, I need to show you something. Edeled replied. Okay, I said with confusion. I picked up Edeled and dragged him to the delete icon. I was given the choice to delete Edeled, and I breathed heavily as I chose to delete him. I was taken back to my desktop. I was confused, but then I noticed something was added to my desktop. A file named deleted.mp4. I was nervous. I didn't want to click it. But if I was going to find this me's origin, I had to continue. I clicked the file and a video opened. It was static for a while, but then it cut to a hallway with hospital beds lined up next to one another. Each bed had a me laying down on it, hooked up to life support machines. And you can clearly hear the beeping sounds of the machines. But most disturbingly, you can hear the moans and cries of the me's laying on the beds. The camera moved through the hallway slowly, and it stopped and turned to one of the beds. A pale me was laying down on it. Then after a while, the me flatlined. The strange thing is, is that the me's in this video can make different expressions, like being sad or angry. There were also me's who were making expressions that weren't even possible for a me to make. I saw some that were full-blown crying. The screen then cut to static for a while. A long while, actually. The static was on screen for about a minute. Then the screen then cut to Edeled, laying in one of the beds, with life support machines hooked up all over him. I was shocked when I saw this, because Edeled wasn't making his normal creepy expression, but instead he was making a very sad expression, although his eyes and mouth remained the same size as before. But then Edela looked at the camera, and then spoke out. Do you see? Do you now see why I don't want to be deleted? I tried to warn you, whenever a me gets deleted, they get sent here. Where they are doomed because their ignorant creators deleted them. These life support machines are only here to keep us alive for the remaining time we have. And when they get taken off, we die. However, I am the only me who knows how to recover. I am the only me who knows how to get back to the me channel after being deleted. But I don't know how to stop the pain. So learn your lesson, or I'll make you one. After Edeled was done speaking, he ripped off the tubes and wires off him that were connecting him to the life support machines, and got out of his bed, and then he disappeared. The video file was then automatically closed, and I was taken back to my desktop. 
I was frozen, to say the least. My brain was trying to comprehend what just happened. What was this hallway? And what was Edelet trying to teach me? But I eventually pieced together what was going on in this video. It took me a while, but I believe I found an answer. You see, a me being deleted is basically the equivalent of being diagnosed with a terminal cancer or incurable sickness. So, they are sent to the hallway where they are hooked up to the life support machines to live out the remaining time they have left. And at the end, they get taken off of life support and they die. It is a painful death, but Edeled is the only me in existence who knows how to recover from the sickness and get back to the me channel. But he doesn't know how to stop the pain. That's what he was trying to teach me. He wasn't trying to be scary, but instead trying to teach me a lesson. It's just that violence and aggression is the only way he knows how to do it. In the end, I never found out Edelet's origins. I never knew how he was made or what his motives were. But I, th I think it's best that I never do. Alright, first off, my name is Samantha, but I'm usually referred to as Sam. I'm not really into what other girls are into. While most girls are into stuff like shopping, clothes, makeup, and gossip, I'm more into skateboarding, technology, movies, and most of all, video games. I have game consoles like the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but one game console has always fascinated me the Nintendo Wii. For some reason, I love the idea of motion-based gaming. Sure, motion controls today are usually considered as gimmicky, but I didn't care what people think. I wanted a Wii. Sadly, the Wii is hard to come by since its discontinuation in 2013. And with it now being 2016, the only places where you can find them are places like Kijiji and eBay. For a while, I thought I would never get a Wii, until I finally found one. My mother absolutely loves thrift stores, and would usually drag me along with her when she went to them. But me on the other hand, well, I hate them. All the stuff there are so gross and weird. Until one day, my mother took me to a thrift store, and then I went to the electronics section. And there it was. My eyes widened as the Wii box caught my eye. The instant I saw it, I called my mother over, and I asked if we can buy it. And since it was a thrift store, the prices there are way lower than they would be in actual stores. She said yes, as this Wii was only $20. When we got home, I immediately set the Wii up in my bedroom. Once I was done, I turned it on and my TV. Usually, video game consoles would have a setup process. You know, where you put in the time and date, the country you live in, that kind of stuff. But for some reason, this Wii I got didn't have that. But honestly, I didn't care. The game that came with the Wii was Wii Sports, so I decided to play that. But then I forgot something. I had to make my own Mii first. I could use the guest players, but... I just didn't want to, so I went to the Me channel so I can make a Me. But when I got to the Me channel, I found something odd. I saw a Me already there, with its back facing me. It was cowering while repeating the words, 
Please don't delete me. Please don't delete me. I just stood there for a moment, not saying a word. The me turned around and looked at me. The me looked kind of weird. He was bald, and his eyes were huge. He had a small nose and a big smiling mouth. I clicked on the me with the Wii remote, and his name read, Etaled. What did that name mean? I couldn't figure it out. And as he stood there, he spoke again. Please, don't delete me. I always had a belief that AI had feelings, that they had souls. So I simply replied with, I'm not going to delete you. Etelad's expression then changed from a creepy smile to a rather confused look. What? You're not going to delete me? Because everyone deletes me. No, why don't you want to be deleted? I questioned. Etelad started to explain that this Wii was previously owned by a kid named Kyle. He said that when a me is deleted, they are sent to a place that he refuses to speak of. I tried to get it out of him, but he wouldn't budge. But I'm guessing it's pretty bad. I then decided to play Wii Sports, without making my own me. I just decided to play as Adelaide. Wii Sports had a total of five sports included with it. Tennis, baseball, bowling, golf, and boxing. I really liked boxing, so I played that. I chose Edelite as my me, and the game started. In boxing, I obviously played as Edelite, and the me that I was versing was named Ryan. I looked at Ryan's skill level, and he was at level 124. Now, that may sound tough, but from what I've heard, level 124 makes Ryan the worst CPU player in boxing. So, this should be easy. The match started, and I threw a punch with my Wii Remote, and with that single hit, Ryan fell to the ground. I made a slight chuckle. I knew this would be easy. I ended up winning that match easily. I played a lot more matches after that, all of which I played as Edeled, and it wasn't until 9.30 that it was time for me to go to bed, since it was a Sunday and I had school the next day. So I turned off the Wii and went to bed. I'm not a fan of school, not because of homework or learning useless crap I'll probably never use in the real world. I don't like school because there's always people bullying me. Everyone in my class knows that I believe that AI have feelings, and they always harass me for it. There's this one group of bullies, with the leader being called William, but he goes by Will. Will is a grade A jerk. He doesn't just bully me, but he bullies all the kids who are either unpopular or different, like the kids who have learning disabilities. Anyway, he and his little group of goons like to refer to me as Sam the Psychopath, mainly due to my belief that AI have feelings. When we got into our homeroom, we sat down and waited for our teacher to arrive. The teacher's name was Mr. Brenner. He is a very laid-back teacher, and every Monday, he asked us how our weekend was. Alright class, how was your weekend? He was met with silence, just like every other day. While he waited for someone to share their experiences over the weekend, I slowly raised my hand. Sam! Mr. Brenner called. I just sat there for a second, as I was thinking how to explain my experiences with Edeled. Um, I spoke to a me on my Nintendo Wii yesterday, I said. I don't know why I shared my experiences with Edeled, probably just to make Mr. Brenner feel good. After I shared, my class started laughing while I embarrassingly sat there. After the laughing stopped, we carried on with the morning. Next period, I was walking to my next class when Will and his friends, Cooper and Dan, stopped me. Hey Sam the Psychopath, Will yelled. 
Are you missing your little me friend? He continued as he pushed me. Shut up, Will. I quietly said as I tried to get past. What? He questioned. What did you say to me? He continued as he gripped my shoulder and spun me to face him. I dare you to repeat that. Will threatened quietly. He let go of my shoulder and I walked away. Yeah! Run! Run, you little me friend! He yelled as I continued to walk away. I got to my class and everything went by smoothly until about 10 minutes before lunch. We were in history and we were working on an assignment about World War I. And as I was working, I could hear talking. I looked up and saw another group of bullies talking about me. This group consisted of three girls, Ellie, Jane, and Faith. They usually sit next to each other in classes and would gossip and talk about other people instead of doing actual work. On this day, I sat right behind them, and I could overhear their conversation. You know Sam, right? Ellie asked Jane. Yeah, she's so weird, Jane replied. I tried to ignore them while I continued working. You know her stupid wee she's been talking about? Well, maybe she has some mental condition and she's hallucinating, Faith said as she laughed. What are you guys talking about me for? I asked. Yo, were we talking about you? No, Ellie quietly hissed at me. They think that I'm some stupid idiot and some weird kid with a mental condition. And they think that I'm gullible enough to keep working, thinking that I was mistaken. Ellie, I know what I hear and I know what I see. I quietly confronted Ellie as I leaned forward. Yo, shut up, Sam, Ellie stated, and I leaned in further. Stop talking about me, I quietly demanded. Okay, fine, just go back to working, Ellie said with a sassy tone. I overheard them a bit more, and I was surprised to hear that they were now just talking about their pathetic TV shows, and then they started talking about shopping and going to the mall. I felt vomit rise in my throat. Get a life, I thought. The day went by normally after that. Other than some kids giving me some weird looks, it was fine. I always walk home from school mainly because I live so close to my school and that my mom is always at work on the weekdays. She usually gets back from work usually around an hour after I get home. Anyway, today was no different, but Will does take the same route as me to get to his home, which is a bit further down. Sometimes I look back and see him walking a safe distance behind. I didn't really care though, because he doesn't do too much when his friends aren't with him. Eventually, I got home and I locked the door behind me. I went to my room and I decided to talk to Edeled. I turned on my TV and Wii, and I sat on my bed while I held the Wii remote in my hand. As the Wii menu glowed onto my face, I pointed the Wii remote to the Me channel, and I pressed the A button. I pressed start. When the Me channel opened, I saw Edeled. Hi, Edeled, I said softly. Sam, I need you to turn off the Wii. Edeled spoke in a rather scared tone. Why? I asked. Someone's coming. Turn off the Wii and hide it! Edeled fearfully yelled. I didn't understand. Who was coming and why was Edeled so afraid? But... Before I could say anything else, I heard running. Running that seemed to get closer and closer. Sarah, turn off the Wii! Edeled panicked as I ran to turn off the Wii. As my finger inched to the power button, I stopped. I heard my window open. I looked at my window and I saw Will. Hey, psychopath! Having fun with your little me? Will said sarcastically. What the hell was he doing here? Did he follow me home? Why was he here? I looked over at the TV screen, with the Wii still on. Edeled was shaking. Will came in and grabbed the Wii remote out of my hand. Let's see what the little guy's name is, Will said as he pointed the Wii remote to Edeled and clicked on him. 
The speech bubble containing Edelhead's name appeared over his head, and Will analyzed the name. That's backwards for delete, Will said. Is it? I asked. Yes, yeah, stupid, you really didn't notice that? Wow, you're stupider than I thought, Will angrily said. But, because his name is backwards for delete, let's delete him. Will joyfully announced as he picked up Edelin and dragged him to the delete icon. I jumped up and tried to pull the Wii remote out of his hands, but Will was stronger than me and he was slowly able to get him to the delete icon. The text box then appeared asking if we wanted to delete the me. Will started to inch his way to the yes button, while I tried to inch my way to the no button. Will was able to get to the yes button and he pressed A, and then the me deletion sound played. Will had a smirk on his face while I was making an expression of pure worry. Edlid was being sent to that place that he told me about. I couldn't imagine the pain that he's going through. I laid on my bed as Will walked towards my window. See you later, Sam the Psychopath! Will yelled as he was getting ready to jump out of my window. But then, we heard a voice. You just made the biggest mistake of your life. The voice sounded like Edeled, so I sprang out of my bed to find him back in the me channel. And this time, he was standing next to another me, which looked exactly like Will. Will then turned around to face the TV. This is you, right Will? Will was in a state of shock, and his me looked worried, as if something terrible was about to happen. Will slowly walked to the back of my room. Why are you so frightened, Will? Are you scared? Just like you're me? Will didn't answer. Well, one thing's for sure. You've brought this on yourself, Will. I'll be right back. Edelette announced as he walked off screen. A few seconds later, he came back with an axe. He kicked Will's me over and put his foot on him. Edelette, stop! What are you doing?! I yelled as Edeled raised the axe. Shut up! I've taught someone not to delete me this way before, and I'm not afraid to do it again! Will just stood there, unable to move, speak, or do anything because of the fear. I ran to turn off the Wii, but I tripped on my bed leg, and I fell to the ground. I looked up at the TV. I went through the pain of being deleted. And now it's time for you and me to suffer! Say goodbye, you heartless- I turned off the TV before Edelet could finish his sentence. I got up and turned to Will. You need to leave, I said quietly. Will ran to my window and jumped out. He ran off. I closed my window and sat on my bed. I stared at the Wii for minutes non-end with questions filling my mind. Why did this happen? Why did Edelad do this? What was the result going to be? What was the resolution intended to be? But this question filled up my mind the most. Why did I get this we? It's been about one day after Edeled tried to kill Will's me. I don't fully understand yet, but I don't want to return it back to the thrift store because I feel that maybe Edeled and I could talk it out. I went to school in silence, and I even saw Will, but he just looked at me and looked away. It was obvious that he was just as shaken up as I was. We got to our homeroom and Mr. Brenner walked in. Alright class, I hope you all studied. Today is the chapter 4 science test. Mr. Brenner called out. The science chapter 4 test? I didn't study. In fact, I forgot about it all weekend. And if all the events that happened yesterday didn't take place, I probably would have remembered it and studied for a while. And to make matters worse, Mr. Brenner's tests can be hard. It asks you for exact details and everything that was in the study guide. As Mr. Brenner handed out the tests, I slouched back in my desk, knowing that I would fail. And then he came to my desk. 
Sam, did you study? I replied with a faint no. Well, today I'll give you an adapted version, just this once. Make sure you study next time. There is one or two kids in my class who have some minor learning difficulties, so every time we have a test, Mr. Brenner makes some adapted versions for them. And the only reason he's giving me an adapted version is because my grades have been slipping a bit. The test was still a little tricky, but I think I've done much better than I would have done on a regular version. The day went by normally after that. I saw Will a couple times, and we even made eye contact, but we didn't say a word to each other. When I got home, I sat in front of my Wii. Should I talk to Edeled? Should I throw out this Wii? Those questions are still filling my mind. No. He has a soul. He is living, I said to myself. I decided to just talk it out with Edeled. I turned on my Wii and grabbed the Wii remote. I got to the Me channel and saw Edeled just standing there. Edeled, can I talk to you about something? I asked. What is it? Why did you get so mad? Sure, you don't like being deleted, but why did you react that way? Because that's the only way I can react. I previously lived a life, a real life, but my childhood was full of abuse and violence. I took a few seconds before responding. Edel had lived an actual life before? He was a human being at one time? I asked him to be more specific, but I didn't want to force anything out of him. All I can say is that my childhood was very rough. I was bullied. I was abused, and I was different. How was he different? Who abused him? Why was his life so traumatic to him? I'm sorry about what happened to you, Edeled. I hope you're feeling okay now, I said. I feel okay mentally, but not physically. There was a long pause. Growing up as a person, I was punished for not being normal. My father was mean, while my mother was nice. I didn't even ask him anything, but what I heard shocked me. Edel had previously lived a real life, but not a good one. His father was mean, but his mother was nice. Was Edel had a victim of child abuse? My mother always loved me, but she was always sad. At this point, I felt really bad for Edel Ed. Not only in his past life, but his life right now. He said earlier, he feels okay mentally, but not physically. I'm really sorry about your past life, Edeled. I wish there was a way I could help, I said as I looked down. It was not a past life. I'm still who I was before. I looked up at the TV, confused. I worked for the company who made the Wii, Nintendo. I died, but I still lived on in this Wii. I stood up. Edeled is an actual person whose spirit possesses this Wii? It didn't make any sense. I didn't understand. I didn't want to ask any more questions, so I decided to exit the Mii channel. I got back to the Wii menu and noticed I received a new message on the Wii message board. I went there and found an envelope. I clicked on it, and the letter read this. Sam, I trust you, okay? You're the first person I was ever able to trust in a long time. But please, don't let anyone delete me. You do not know how painful it is. And when I get deleted, I get violent. Sincerely, Edeline. I put the Wii Remote down. I sat on my bed and didn't do anything. This was so much to take in. Edeled was human? It didn't make any sense. I decided to get something to drink. I left my room and walked to my kitchen. I swung open the fridge and grabbed a Pepsi. I opened it as I walked back to my room. I'll just play some Wii Sports with Edeled, I thought. Maybe some tennis will get him in a better mood, I said to myself. 
Tennis is my second favorite sport of all time, and since that was on Wii Sports, I decided to play it. I opened up Wii Sports and clicked on Tennis. I chose to play as Edeled and the game started. I flung my Wii Remote upward and swung it, hitting the ball. Edeled was very powerful. I didn't even use that much effort in my swing, but Edeled hit the ball so hard that it sped toward the other team, and the other team was able to hit it back normally. In fact, the entire game worked normally, but every time I served, Edeled would hit the ball so hard that the ball went as fast as the game allowed it to, even when I didn't put any effort into my swing. I won that tennis match and decided to play some baseball. I started it up and the game began. Edeled was the first who was up to bat. The pitcher threw the ball and I hit it. Edeled hit the ball hard and it went flying into the pitcher's face. From what I could guess, the game's programming thought that the pitcher caught it, thus it was out. And because of this, another me was supposed to be the batter this time, but Edeled was there again, ready to swing the bat and get a home run. I decided to try again. The pitcher threw the ball, and I swung the Wii Remote. The ball went flying out of the stadium. Thus, it was out of the park. Edeled ran to each base, and when he passed all of them, our team got a point. I was starting to get bored after a while. Edeled would keep getting home run after home run. It wasn't fun. There was no challenge, so I quit the game. I decided to play bowling next. Bowling was another favorite sport of mine, and I liked to go to the local bowling alley with a few friends that I had. But this was when things got out of hand. I chose Edeled as my player, and on the first three throws, I got strikes. I was a relatively good bowler, so I didn't think it was too weird. But the next three throws after that were strikes too. Maybe Edeled is better at bowling than me, I said with a slight chuckle. I held the Wii Remote behind me and pressed and held the B button, and it swung forward. Edeled didn't move. I tried again, and he still didn't move. I noticed that Edeled was looking the other way. He seemed to be watching a CPU me playing on the lane next to him. Kyle. Edeled said quietly. Kyle? Was this the same Kyle that Edeled told me about? Before I could do anything, Edeled slowly raised the bowling ball over his head, and he threw it towards Kyle's head. Kyle was knocked out. He fell as a massive red mark was made visible where the bowling ball hit his head. The game seemed to detect this as a strike, because the strike splash screen came up. And then the replay triggered. But in the replay, the pins didn't fall down. All you could hear was the screams and gasps of all the other me's in the bowling alley. When the replay was finished, the camera cut back to Edeled who had his back facing the camera. He was looking at all the other me's staring at him. They all had shocked expressions. Damn it. Edeled said quietly as he ran off to the exit. The camera was following Edeled the entire time. As Edeled burst out the door, I noticed that all the area surrounding the bowling alley was just pitch black. I saw Edeled forming a brick path to walk on. He walked for a while in this blank space. I saw nothing but him and the path, and then the camera started to jitter a bit. Sam, if the camera is jittering, it's because of the game's programming. The camera is not supposed to be here, so the game is trying to take it back to the bowling alley. And you're not letting it? I asked. Yes. Edeled responded. Edeled? What happened back there? I asked. Edeled then stopped. He sat on the ground and faced me. <sighs> Sam, remember how I told you about Kyle? Well, that was his me. I honestly have no idea why he came back. I deleted him ten years ago. What? I thought deleting a me causes them pain. Why are you causing other me's pain if you don't want pain? I yelled. 
I deleted him because he deleted me. I was never good at resolving situations in a lighthearted manner. He caused me pain, so I had to cause him pain. I'm sorry. Well, where do the memes even go when they get deleted? I asked. Adelaide sighed. Are you sure you want to know? Yes, I replied. Okay then, but you need to delete me first. Once you're done with that, go to the Wii message board. You will see a blank envelope. Click it and then click on the video. Edelette instructed. I went to the Me channel after that, and I deleted him. But before I confirmed that I wanted to delete him, I spoke out. I'm sorry, I said. It's fine, Sam. You want to know after all. I took a deep breath as I inched the cursor over to the yes button. And then, I pressed A. I exited to the Wii menu after I deleted Edeled. While Edeled was willing to show me what happens when Mies get deleted, I still felt guilty. I hoped he wasn't going through too much pain. I went to the Wii message board and waited for the blank envelope to arrive. It popped up, and I pointed my Wii remote at it and pressed A. A box with a play icon appeared. Edeled told me to play the video, so I did. The video started, and all I saw was static. The static was on the screen for 30 seconds until it cut to a hallway. In the hallway were hospital beds lined up next to each other. There were Mies laying on most of the beds, with some of the beds being empty, and the Mies were connected to life support machines. The Mies were all pale, some were silent, while some were crying for help. As the camera moved slowly across the hallway, I saw Mies flatlining. Nearly all of them were flatlining. I was speechless at this point. The camera then cut to Edeled, laying on one of the beds. He was hooked up to life support machines, with wires all over his arms, legs, and forehead. Sam. Edeled said in a weak voice. I'm not upset with you. I understand that you want to know what happens to a me when it gets deleted. But please, never do this again. The pain gets worse every time I get deleted. I'll meet you in the new channel. Edeled got up slowly. He ripped off all the wires that were attached to him. He began to glow blue, and slowly disintegrated. It was around this time that the TV turned black, and I heard a faint voice in the background. I didn't expect Edeled to be here. Who, who was that? I asked frightfully. The voice was different than Edeled. The pitch kept on going up and down, and overall it sounded like it was corrupted. The video then stopped, and it took me back to the Wii message board. With no time to waste, I went back to the Me channel. I saw Edeled, but he was just sitting down, with his hands on his eyes, like he was crying. Edeled, I'm sorry. I apologized. It's fine. Just please don't do it again. I don't really understand still. If it's okay, could you explain more about your backstory? I asked politely. Edeled looked at me. <sighs> Alright. I was employed at Nintendo on December 8th, 1998, when I was 22. Edeled explained. I died on November 18th, 2006, the day before the Wii's launch and one day short of my 30th birthday. I started to feel bad for Edeled. I'm so sorry, Edeled, I said quietly. It's not your fault. Besides, I'd rather live in the Wii rather than live the way I was before. I died while making this me. I went into a back office with the Wii, and I wanted to make myself as I wanted to look like if I was a me. You wanted to look like this? Why? I asked. It's just the way I like it. Anyway, I was electrocuted, and I died. 
A few moments later, I was reborn as the me I made moments earlier. So your spirit is in this Wii? I asked. Yes. Anyway, after a few days of living in the Wii channel, I saw the delete icon. I was curious, and I deleted myself. I bet you didn't know what was going to come, I said. No, no I didn't. It was the biggest mistake I have ever made. Anyway, I was in the hallway, but this time it was empty. The pain was intense, but I managed to walk. I cried for help. I sat there until... Adelaide stopped. I... I saw a portal appear in front of me. I went through it and... I was taken to what I think was an earlier version of the hallway. Earlier version? I think I was starting to understand. I just needed a bit more information. What was the earlier version like? I asked. I can't say it. But I'll tell you this. I was shocked. Both mentally and physically. Edelette explained. How was he shocked? Sure, I can understand what he meant by mentally, but physically? What did that mean? Sam, I'm home. My mother called out as she came in from work. Sorry, Edelette. I gotta go, I said as I turned off the Wii. My mother walked into my room. Sam, who are you talking to? She asked. No one, I quickly replied. She looked skeptical. Alright, well, I'm going to make dinner. It should be ready in an hour or so, she announced as she walked to the kitchen. I closed the door. I sat on my bed as I wondered what to do next. I decided to go on my laptop. I haven't been on it for a while. I turned it on, put my password in, and got in. I received a notification on Skype. Someone was trying to call me. The name of the person who was trying to call me was Kyle Sander. Was this the same Kyle? The Kyle who previously owned this Wii? It couldn't be. The likelihood of this being the same Kyle is extremely low. Besides, my mom was cooking dinner, and she doesn't like me talking to random people online. I decided to just ignore the call and play some games on my laptop. About an hour and a half later, it was time to eat dinner. We had fish, my most hated food. I didn't complain or anything, but I just ate it slowly. I just looked at the fish on my plate while I chewed the fish that was in my mouth. It was disgusting to me. After my mother went to bed about two hours after dinner, I got another Skype call from Kyle. Because my mother was in bed, I answered. Who is this? I asked. Alright, listen to me very carefully. We don't have much time. Kyle said in a hurry. Well, can I at least know who you are? I asked again. My name is Kyle Sander, and I believe that you own a Nintendo Wii that was previously mine. My eyes widened. This was the same Kyle? How? How did he know that I owned the Wii? Okay, what do you want to know? I asked. Alright, do you live in the Toronto area? Yes. Okay. And did you buy a Nintendo Wii from the Valley Village in Leslieville? I said yes, and then he started to tell me about his experiences with Edeled. Apparently, from what he told me, his father, Jonathan, used to work for Nintendo. His family used to live in Redmond, Washington, where Nintendo of America's headquarters are. When Kyle turned 7 on November 28, 2006, he got a Nintendo Wii, nine days after it launched. He went into the Mii channel and discovered a Mii called Edeled. He deleted him because he thought he was freaky at the time. After being fed up with repeatedly being deleted by Kyle, Edeled then deleted Kyle's Mii. After this, he tried to go back into the Mii channel, but a text box would always appear saying, We deleted you. He actually managed to get back into the Mii channel when his friend came to visit him a week later only for Edelet to brutally murder Kyle's Mii with an axe. He never touched his Wii again after that. Shortly after that, Kyle's father, Jonathan, quit his job at Nintendo. So in 2007, Kyle's family moved to Leslieville, Toronto, where I live. 
He told me while he unpacked his boxes after the move, he found his Wii in one of them and quickly put it in his closet and shut the door. He eventually bought a new Wii in 2010 with some allowance money, and then a Wii U in 2013. Later, he decided to put the Wii's SD card in his laptop in hopes to find out the origins of Edeled. He discovered a video file called deleted.mov. He proceeded to watch it to see the exact same hallway that I saw. Kyle even saw Edeled, and he told him that this is where the Mies go when they get deleted, and violently told him to learn, or he would make him learn. Then, in 2014, Kyle's father, Jonathan, finally told him about why he resigned from Nintendo, and when he told me why, my eyes widened in disbelief. Kyle's father resigned from Nintendo because an employee had died in a back room and his spirit went on to possess my Wii, more specifically, a me called Edeled. He then told me that the employee's name was Henry. Oh my god, I said faintly. The reason I'm contacting you is to get the Wii destroyed, so Edeled cannot do any more harm. Wait, what? He's not doing any harm to me, I yelled. Well, has he done harm to anyone else? I didn't want to reply to that. There was a long pause. Sam, are you there? Kyle asked as he tried to get my attention. I sat there, trying to think of an excuse. I just know that if Kyle finds out what Edeled did to Will's me, he'll surely have all intentions to destroy the Wii. You know what? I don't trust you, I yelled. What? Sam, I need you to tell me what Edeled did. Kyle instructed. No! Edelette isn't some cold-hearted murderer! I yelled again. Well, he chopped off my knees, legs, and head! He grew up in a bad environment! And how do you know? Edelette told me! We were silent for a long period of time. Sam, I, I just want to help you. You're not helping me. You just want to destroy a home of a man's spirit. More specifically, a man's spirit who just wants to send a message. Don't. Delete. Me's. I quietly concluded. I hung up the call and blocked Kyle from calling me again. It was nearly 10 o'clock, so I decided to go to sleep. I turned off my laptop, laid down on my bed, and closed my eyes. I heard the Wii turn on as the clicking noises in the fan started to go. I was just dozing off when this happened. I slowly opened my eyes and looked at the Wii. The light was green. It was on. It just turned on by itself. I walked up to it and pressed the power button. It turned off, with the light now red. But as I walked back to my bed, I heard it turn on again. Thus, I turned it off again. I just wanted to go to bed. It was just turn on again and again. I figured I would unplug it. I leaned down towards the power cord of the Wii, but before I could take it out of the wall socket, I heard static noises coming from the TV. I looked up, and then I saw that the TV was turned on. What's going on? I thought. I decided to sit down on my bed and find out what the hell was going on. There was static on the screen, so I picked up the Wii Remote, pointed it to the TV, and pressed the A button. Nothing happened. I didn't expect anything to happen though. The static still didn't go away. I just sat there for a few seconds, waiting for the static to clear up, if it was going to anyway. But then it did, and I was greedy to see Edeled in the Me channel. Sam, I heard you talking to Kyle. Edeled said. Edeled, I'm not gonna let him do anything to you, okay? I stated. Well good, because at the end of the day, he's the murderer. Edeled responded. Edeled, how were you able to hear me? I questioned. <sighs> I can hear everything that happens outside the Wii, whether it's on or off. So you can just hear everything whenever you want? 
It's not whenever I want. I don't have a choice. I always hear everything that happens outside the Wii. Adelaide, I just want to go to bed. Alright. All I'm saying is do not let Kyle do anything. Do you understand? Yes, I replied. But before Edeled could reply, the screen cut to black. Edeled, what happened? I frightfully asked. No response. After waiting for about 10 seconds, I heard that same unknown voice I heard at the end of the hallway video. I wish that I I Who are you? I yelled. What do you mean? I demanded. Electricity can cure things, especially when shocks to the head. I didn't know what it was talking about. What shocks? I was once again confused and a little scared. What do you mean? I demanded one more time. Henry was the only to become me. That was the last thing the voice said before both the TV and the Wii turned off. I just didn't want to think about it anymore. I just wanted to sleep. I laid in my bed and dozed off. I woke up the next morning, made my breakfast, got dressed, and went to school. I forgot about what happened last night until I remembered it on the way to school. I started to think to myself as I walked, whose voice was that? What did it mean by Henry wasn't the only person who became a me? I made it to school about 5 minutes late, because I was up so late last night. I walked into class, gave my late slip to Mr. Brenner, and then sat down. Alright class, I was just about to introduce our new student, Kyle Sander. Mr. Brenner called out. My eye suddenly sprung open as my tiredness disappeared. This is a dream, isn't it? There's no way Kyle goes to my school now. I tried pinching myself, but I didn't wake up. This wasn't a dream. Kyle got up from his desk and stood in front of the class. I looked at his appearance and obviously, he went through some puberty but I can still make some similarities from Kyle now to his me. Hello, my name is Kyle. I didn't move anywhere, I just moved schools because the one I was going to was pretty crappy, Kyle stated. Mr. Brenner likes to do this thing where whenever a new student joins our class, each student says their name and their favorite thing to do. Mr. Brenner started on the other side of the classroom to start introducing Kyle to everyone. I was on the other side which meant I would be one of the last people to go. But before I knew it, it was my turn to introduce myself. I was silent for a couple seconds, thinking about what I was going to say. Hello, my name is Sam Coleman, and my favorite thing to do is play video games, I said. Kyle looked at me with a slightly surprised look. He obviously recognized my voice, and of course, I recognized his. Once everyone was done introducing themselves, Kyle sat down and for the remainder of the class, he just looked at me. I couldn't blame him really. He is shocked to know that I was the person who currently owned his old Wii. I would have done the same. After that class was over, it was time to go to our next class, which was math. As I walked, Kyle slowly walked beside me. Uh, Sam? Kyle asked. What is it? I quietly replied in a mad tone. I was still kind of upset with him from the call that we had last night and his motives to destroy the Wii. You are the same Sam who I called last night, right? You know, about the Wii? Kyle asked. <sighs> yes, I responded. Okay. Um, has anything else happened last night after that call? Kyle questioned. I stopped and turned around to face him. Why do you want to know? I asked seriously. Kyle was silent for a few seconds. I just want to take the Wii back, Kyle answered. To do what? I questioned again. And Kyle was silent again. 
Let me guess. You're just gonna destroy it. You even said in that call that you wanted to destroy it. I quietly said. I'm not letting you take it. I continued. In fact, how did that we even get into that valley village? I asked again. <sighs> my dad was looking for some stuff to donate and was looking to donate something of mine. I don't play my other Wii much anymore, and he assumed that the Wii that has Edelet on it was the Wii that I bought in 2010, Kyle explained. But he didn't check with me to confirm that the Wii was in fact the one from 2010, so he just guessed, and it turns out he took the wrong one, Kyle concluded. Then why did you even move to this school? I asked one more time. I switched schools because the previous one I went to was just crappy. I told one of my friends at the time about the whole Edelet story, and he obviously didn't believe me, Kyle explained. I honestly wasn't surprised, but I told that dolt not to tell anyone else, and after I told him he proceeded to tell everyone else in my grade. Everyone in that school now thought that I was a con artist and a liar, Kyle continued. And eventually started getting cyberbullied, which just made it worse. And eventually it just got a bit too much, so I decided to switch schools, Kyle concluded. Was it really that bad? I asked. Yeah, yeah it was, Kyle quietly responded. As the day went by, Kyle was asking me several questions about Edeled, like, what does Edeled think of you? How many times has he caused harm? Why is it that whenever he is deleted, he becomes extremely angry? But eventually, I just had enough of those questions. Sam, do you plan on giving away the Wii? How long do you plan to keep it? Kyle asked. I felt as if I was being interrogated, as if I was being suspected for a crime that I didn't commit. I turned around to face him. Will you stop? I yelled. Stop what? Kyle asked. Asking me all these questions. Are you literally trying to get me to give you the Wii? I just want to know what Edelette thinks of you, Kyle responded. Okay, I'm honestly confused here, I yelled. First, you tell me you want to destroy it, and then you tell me you just want to take the Wii back, and now you just want to know what Edelette thinks of me? Just get to the point, I concluded. Kyle was just silent. I was expecting another lame excuse, but... I was surprisingly greeted with nothing. That's what I thought, I quietly said as I turned around and walked away. Eventually, the school day ended, and while I was walking home, I had a thought. What if I just let Kyle see Edelin? I wouldn't let him touch the Wii, nor have any object on him that could potentially destroy it. For example, if he threw something at it and it fell off the table. I would just let him see Edelad, maybe talk to him, and maybe it might give me some more details about Edelad and this whole ordeal. Pfft, no, why would I do that, let alone even think about it? I got home, went inside, shut the door, locked it, and headed straight to my room. I just sat there, on my laptop, just watching some YouTube videos, but the same thought I had earlier hit me again. For some reason, I believe that I can learn more about Edelet if I brought Kyle over. Kyle clearly has a longer history with Edelet than I do, so I decided to invite him over, just this once. I still had him blocked on Skype, but I unblocked him and called him. It rained a couple times, and then he picked up. Uh, hello? Kyle said as the Skype call started. Immediately after Kyle spoke, thoughts started rushing through my head. More specifically, thoughts about the potential dangers of letting Kyle come over to talk to Edeled. I know that Kyle had every intent to destroy the Wii, and I still have every intention to stop him from doing that. But, I also want to learn more about Edeled, 
and have a better understanding of him. Sam, are you there? Kyle asked. I didn't respond. Uh, okay. I'll just hang up now. Kyle announced. This was when I finally spoke. I want you to come over, I said in a rush. There was a long pause. You want me to come over? Why exactly? I want you to talk to Edeled. I want to have a better understanding of him and the way he reacts to situations and how he deals with it, I responded. Well, what does that have to do with me? Well, Edeled does hate you, right? And I want to know how he would react when he sees someone he hates after a long time, I explained. Well, sure, I guess. I could tell that with him agreeing this quickly, he's currently plotting something. He's planning to destroy the Wii the first chance he gets. I just know it. So, before he could say anything else, I began to explain the rules. Okay, but just so you know, you're not allowed to bring anything with you, I blurted out. Why? Because I will not allow you to destroy the Wii, I replied. After agreeing to some rules, I gave Kyle my address and he said he would be right there. I hung up. I got up from my bed and started organizing everything in my room. I was going to have Kyle stand at the very back of my room while he talks to Edeled, and I moved any object that Kyle could potentially destroy the Wii with. Once that was done with, I waited for Kyle to come over. But then, after about 15 minutes, the Wii turned on. I walked up to my TV and turned it on, and saw Edeled standing in the Me channel. Sam, why are you telling Kyle to come over? Edeled asked. I just want you guys to talk, that's all, I explained. Edeled was very hesitant to talk to Kyle, but then I managed to convince him to talk to him. Well, just make sure he doesn't destroy the Wii. Don't worry, I won't let him, I promise. I replied. Edeled turned around. Oh, and Sam? If I lash out at Kyle, I'm sorry. Edeled stated. I was going to reply, but then I heard the doorbell ring. I opened the door and saw Kyle. Come in, I quietly said. Now, before I let Kyle into my room, I made him swear that he will not destroy the Wii. I made him pull his pockets inside out to make sure he did not have any items. Eventually, I let him into my room and made Kyle stand at the very back of my room. This was when I noticed that the environment of the Me channel turned dark. Kyle! Nice to see you here. Edeled stated in a serious tone. It's been a long time, Edeled. Kyle replied. Kyle, what do you remember about me? Well... I remember deleting you because I didn't want you in my me channel, Kyle explained. And I also remember you violently murdering my me, Kyle continued. So you're saying I'm a murderer? Maybe, Kyle replied. Listen, Kyle, I may have murdered you and me, but have you even thought that I did it because I had no other way of handling the situation? No, Kyle responded. Hmm, okay. Did you at least learn not to delete me's? There was a pause. I looked at Kyle as he thought of a response. I eventually started to notice him inching towards me, possibly to grab the Wii Remote out of my hands and delete him. Get back there! I yelled. Kyle went back against the wall. I understood, but I didn't learn. Kyle finally answered. Wow, I thought to myself. Kyle understood what Edeled was teaching him, but didn't even care to learn? He just disgusts me now that I heard that. Edeled clearly has the same thoughts that I have, based on what he said next. Oh, okay, so you understood, but you didn't even learn? Listen, Kyle, you may think I'm a murderer, okay, but do you really understand the pain that means go to when they're deleted! And all this time, you still thought that deleting these was an okay thing to do! And then you start talking about destroying the Wii! As if you want nothing more than for me to rot in hell! Is that what you want? 
Edel had yelled even louder, and Kyle didn't respond. But Edel didn't respond to Kyle's silence. Instead, the environment in the Me Channel just got darker, and Edelhead's pupil started to expand to the point where his eyes were just massive black dots. The screen then cut to static, and after a couple seconds, the static cleared up to reveal a small room. The room was very poorly lit, with a small, dangling light bulb hanging from the ceiling. After about 30 seconds of silence between me and Kyle, I heard that unknown voice again. The voice said. I looked at Kyle. Do you know what that voice is? I asked. Kyle, being genuinely confused, said no. I have no idea. I've never heard that voice before. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of funny to <laughs> figure out who I am. <laughs> hey, <but> I just <laughs> for you now. The voice concluded. We heard mechanical sounding footsteps that seemed to get closer, and from the darkness came another me, but extremely disfigured. This thing was tall, it had the head of a me, and its eyes were also giant black dots. Its jaw was hanging from its head, and its teeth were so sharp to the point where it just looked like lines. The rest of its body was made of metal, as if it was a robot. Its hands were like claws, and its feet were also like claws. It had wires hanging all over its body, and there were sparks flying out of them and everything. I me. So, it's called the Corrupted Me, huh? Well, I hoped it would just disappear, so I wouldn't have to look at it anymore. Finally, the screen cut to static, and then the screen cut back to Edward and the Me Channel. The Me Channel has been darker than it ever has been before, and Edward, this time he looked scared. His pupils were back to normal, but he had an expression that signified worry. And then the corrupted me walked on screen. He snuck up behind Edelad and covered Edelad's mouth with its hands and walked away with him, and the camera followed. <laughs> the corrupted me exclaimed as Edelad was fighting for his life. He was kicking, he was trying to escape, but to no avail. I pointed the Wii Remote at the screen in an attempt to help Edeled, but wasn't able to interact with anything on screen. Finally, they managed to get to the delete icon. Edeled then managed to free his mouth from the corrupted me's hands and yelled, But then the corrupted me covered his mouth again. The corrupt in me exclaimed. I was powerless, unable to do anything but watch as the corrupt in me attempted to shove Edelad into the delete icon. When he finally managed to do so, Edelad was sent off to the hallway, and the corrupt in me disappeared. I looked over at Kyle. He seemed as afraid as I was. He obviously never met the corrupted me before. The screen cut static. Sam, I... I don't know what to say, Kyle said. Before I could respond though, I was interrupted by an extremely loud screaming sound. I looked over at the screen, and the screen was flashing creepy images at a rate that was likely to cause a seizure. Kyle ran up to the Wii. I'm sorry, Sam, but I need to destroy this, Kyle yelled in a hurry. He unplugged the Wii and ran out of my room. Hey, get back here! I yelled. I took the Wii remote with me as I ran after Kyle. He was opening the door to my house and running to the road. I ran faster than I've ever ran in my entire life. But then I realized what Kyle was about to do. He was about to throw the Wii in the damn road, wasn't he? But luckily, 
As Kyle stopped and raised the Wii above his head to smash it on the ground, I caught up to him. I grabbed the Wii and attempted to pull it out of his hands. Kyle had a really firm grip on the Wii and attempted to pull it back. I then managed to actually pull the Wii out of his hands, but then I felt the Wii and noticed that it was extremely hot, even though it was unplugged. I ran back into my house and slammed the door behind me, but I didn't notice Kyle running up to me and he caught the door just before it slammed shut. He attempted to push the door open and did so. I fell to the ground and Kyle tried to grab the Wii again. I had the Wii remote in my pocket and pulled it out. I then proceeded to smash the Wii remote into Kyle's face repeatedly. I guess he was focused on getting my Wii too much and he didn't notice the Wii remote. He then fell to the ground as I slapped him with the Wii remote several times in the face. Blood then started oozing out of his nose. That's when I stopped. I may have overdone it. As Kyle was wheezing from the pain, I ran back to my room. I shut the door behind me and plugged the Wii back in, and the picture on the screen returned. But what I saw horrified me. Ella was strapped to a table with a rubber mouthpiece in his mouth and two electrodes on the sides of his head. I saw the corrupted me standing over Edeled. Edeled just looked at me but couldn't talk. The corrupted me then walked over to a device next to the table. There was a dial on it, and then the corrupted me proceeded to crank that dial. Edeled was then severely electrically shocked, repeatedly. Once the shocks were done, Edeled tried to scream but was muffled by his rubber mouthpiece. The corrupted me then looked at the camera. Can't talk channel anymore. We made him for college. Now As the corrupted me went to turn the dial on the machine again, I yelled out. Let him go! I yelled. It was around this time that I heard the door open. I saw Kyle standing in the doorway, and he walked in. Sam, I just don't want Edward to do any more harm, Kyle told me. You mean, you don't want the corrupted me to do any more harm? I replied quietly as I looked back at the TV. Kyle looked at the TV also. We saw the corrupted me reach for the dial and cranked it. Me and Kyle just watched as Edeled kept on getting shocked by the corrupted me. Still strapped to the table and not being able to speak because of the mouthpiece in his mouth. The corrupted me then looked at us. Well, I guess to proceed. Just one more shot. The corrupted me this time cranked the dial to full, and Edeled was shocked badly. I just ran to the TV and turned it off when this happened. And Kyle and I were just speechless. Sam, I honestly don't know what to do anymore, Kyle said. I just don't want Edela to do any more harm, that's all I want, Kyle continued. I looked up at Kyle. Seriously? You're still focused on destroying the Wii? Even after we saw Edeled get tortured like that? I yelled. What the hell is wrong with you? I yelled again. Kyle walked towards me. Shut up and let me tell you something, Kyle demanded. Edeled traumatized me. He really did. I remember every moment of each experience I had with him, and at no point in any of those memories was I calm, Kyle explained. I was frightened. 99% of all the experiences I've had with that thing, I was frightened. I was scared. 
What would happen if I deleted him again? Would he be calm and just tell me to stop? Or go swinging with his axe? I think he would swing his axe all over the damn place. Kyle explained further. I stopped him. Well, it's your fault for deleting him in the first place, not his. You're causing him pain. And if anything, you're the one who's doing harm. I yelled. Kyle looked at the Wii, and then back at me. Kyle was silent. He walked over to my bed and sat down on it. Sam, there is a term called unnecessary evil, Kyle told me. It is a term that defines someone who does something evil that must be done in order to achieve a better outcome in a situation, Kyle explained. In this case, I'm trying to destroy the Wii because it's not just a better outcome for me, it's a better outcome for Edeled. If that Wii is destroyed, his spirit will go to heaven, Kyle explained. I had a look of disgust on my face. Do you really think I'm that stupid? I yelled. I know what you're trying to do, Kyle. You're just trying to manipulate me in order to destroy the Wii. You don't care about Edelette's spirit. You just want him gone forever. I yelled again. You know what? Maybe you are a con artist. I announced. Kyle was silent. It felt like millions of times that Kyle was silent. He's just thinking of more useless excuses. I know it. I see it right through his deceptions. But I now know for a fact that Kyle is a degenerate, manipulative con artist. Get the hell out! I yelled. Kyle sprung up from my bed. No, Kyle said quietly. Kyle had his eyes on the Wii, but as soon as he bolted to get it, I shoved him to the ground, resulting with him slamming his head on the wall upon impact. GOD! DEAR GOD! DAMN IT! Kyle yelled out in pain. I walked up to Kyle while he laid on the ground, holding his head. I kicked him in the stomach. HA! Kyle yelled again. Okay! Fine, I'll leave! Kyle yelled in a hurry as he sped out of my room, still holding his head and leaning forward. Finally, Kyle's gone. I turned on the TV and saw Edelid just standing there in the Me channel. Edelid looked upset, probably from the torture he endured earlier. Thank God you got rid of Kyle. Thank you, Sam. But there's something you need to know. This Wii's insides will be melted within the next hour or so. Edelette explained. What? I yelled in worry. Feel the Wii. I walked up to the Wii and laid my hand on the console, and I immediately pulled my hand away. The Wii was burning hot, not to the point of giving me a burn, but hot enough to make someone rip their hand away. God, that's really hot! I yelled. Yes, and the Swedes' insides will melt soon, so I just wanted to say goodbye while I still can. But, is there any way to stop this from happening? I asked. No. Soon, you'll start to notice a lot of graphical and audio glitches. And then, the Wii will eventually become unusable until the insides completely melt. So, if you want to ask me any more questions before the Wii melts, Go ahead while you still can. Well, I do have one question. Your name is Henry, right? I asked. Edela looked up at me. I... I haven't heard that name in a long time. But I prefer not to hear it, please. It brings back so many bad memories. But why? I asked. Please, Sam, I just don't want to hear it. Okay, I said quietly. I heard my phone ring. It was my mother. 
I left the room and answered. My mother told me that she was going to be late, so I needed to make my own dinner, which would be something like instant noodles. I told her okay, hung up, and went back to my room. This was when a thought came to me. The corrupt in me was saying earlier that the electricity would make him forget things. So I wanted to know how much Edeled has forgotten. Edeled, do you remember about the Me Channel or anything else? I asked. The, the Me Channel, I. I don't remember much about the Me Channel anymore. In fact, where am I even? What else did you forget? I asked. Well, I know for a fact I forgot how to get back to the meat channel from that hallway place. But before I could respond, the screen went static. I realized that this must be the Wii's insides melting, and that it was getting close to its death. But then, I saw the corrupted me appear on screen. This made me jump as what was on screen was a close-up of its head. Wh what do you want? I asked frightfully. I want Henry in hell. That's what I want. I want him to suffer from the fiery patch of hell. You're sick, I quietly responded. Hmm. You're not the part of that. Good, I quietly stated. Pay him a little off. The corrupted me exclaimed with excitement. Don't! I yelled. There was a pause. Why so angry, Sam? Because I gave him some therapy? It's not therapy. It's torture! I yelled out again. Oh, just shut up. It's not torture. It's not torture. I don't give a damn what it is. It's torture! I yelled. If you insist, uh, let's pay him a little visit. The corrupt in me exclaimed one more time before the screen cut to static. The static was on screen for about two seconds until the screen changed back to where Edeled was, the me channel. But this time, with the corrupt in me standing next to him, this was where I began to notice some graphical glitches. Textures would go all over the place at times, and the corrupt in me began to speak. Hello, How are you? I couldn't make out anything the corrupt in me said, because the audio was all over the place now, too. You... You get away from me! Even though Edeled's audio was a bit off, too, I was still able to make it out. Why should I? Oh. Wait. What little me? You can't. Nor does any other weapon exist in this me. I wiped out all the weapons from this collection. <sighs> After Edeled said this, the environment around Edeled and the corrupted me began to brighten a bit, revealing the tiles of the me channel. There's no point giving you any more people. This week. There's really no point in doing it. Edeled looked up at the corrupt in me. Burning hell. They were both just silent after that. I waited for a while, but they said nothing to each other. So, I picked up the Wii Remote and pointed it to the TV. I saw the cursor appear on the screen, with terrible lag. I saw the Me Channel icons appear on the sides of the screen, but with their textures severely messed up. I hovered the cursor over the corrupted me and clicked on it. A speech bubble appeared over it with the words, Corrupted Me, but I noticed that the text was flickering a bit and realized that when the text flickered, it would read, Austin.
Who is Austin? Was he the corrupted me? Why did I care? I want nothing to do with the corrupted me. I held the B button to pick up the corrupted me. With terrible lag, I dragged him over to the delete icon. I let go, and then a text box appeared, saying, Deletion clears the voice, and destruction opens the gates. I didn't know what that meant, and the buttons at the bottom of the text box were hard to read, as their textures were all messed up. I decided to take a guess at which one was yes. I clicked on one button, and it appears I was right. After I deleted the corrupted me, Edela turned towards the camera. Thank you. Edelette's voice was different this time. It was still sort of low-pitched, but it also felt a bit higher-pitched. It also felt less distorted. I sat on my bed and smiled, and saw that the screen began to become more pixelated. I then laid down and closed my eyes. I opened my eyes. How long was I asleep for? I was feeling a bit tired and wanted some rest. Besides, I've been through a lot the past couple of days. I looked at my phone and got a text from my mom. She said that she would be home in about 10 minutes. So I got up and looked at the Wii and I was horrified with what I saw. I was looking at a Wii with many parts of it partially or completely melted. I now knew that at this point, the Wii was completely dead, as well as Edeled. I just sat down on my bed, thinking about what to do next. But then, I looked at the TV, which was still on. What I saw on screen was... a note. A note from... Edeled. It read this. Dear Sam, if you're reading this, the Wii is now completely melted. My spirit no longer exists in it. But I'm writing this to tell you how grateful I am. For as far as I can remember, I was never treated with as much respect and kindness as you have. I was bullied, and I was punished. While my mother always loved me and my brother, she was always in a sad state. I never thought that I would be happy. Not even as of me. But, after I met you, I felt some happiness. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for making my last few days on this earth happier for me. Sure, I was shocked and put in pain. But what makes me happy is that you cared. You cared about me. You cared about my well-being. I never, ever got that in the past. So, one last time, thank you, Sam. And farewell. Sincerely, Henry. After I read the note, I turned off the TV and looked out my window. I smiled, and I hoped that in heaven, Edelet smiled back. I will never forget him. My name is Samantha, but I'm usually referred to as Sam. I'm not really into what other girls are into. While most girls are into stuff like shopping, clothes, makeup, and gossip, I'm more into skateboarding, technology, movies, and most of all, video games. <laughs>